Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God the Father, Jesus the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The circles. We have cycled through the entire year of Luke, year C. And here we are, we arrive once again at the foot of the cross. So today is Christ the King Sunday. It's the end of a church year, and we have been building up to this moment uh, through the parables and healings and feedings. And we've also been building up to this moment through some really difficult texts that we find in Luke. And the texts have really challenging messages. And Luke makes us wrestle with who Jesus is and who we want Jesus to be and who we think Jesus is. And those three things don't always fall into alignment. There's quite a bit of disalignment, actually. And the misalignment has been hard. It's been, it's been challenging. It's been difficult. It, it, but it calls us into deeper waters of faith. It makes us stand in a place that's uncomfortable. And then we end once again with Jesus on the cross. So nothing hits us harder than we come face to face with the cross in front of us. We don't quite expect it right, right before Thanksgiving or, or right before Christmas. But it's the heart of the gospel. And the cross is an ending. And it's also a beginning because it's a never-ending circle of love. The cross is sin and the resurrection is forgiveness. The cross is sorrow and the resurrection is joy. And what is death? And what is new life? And the cycle begins and it ends and it begins again. So the church year is not like the worldly calendar. It holds its own ebbs and, and it holds its own flows and it holds its own beginnings and it holds its own endings. And sometimes it coincides with the yearly calendar and sometimes it stands on its own. And here is one of these times there's an actual end where we still have quite a few weeks left to go in our you know, worldly calendar. And November is a really interesting month. It's one of the fullest months of the year. It, it, we begin with honoring our loved ones with all saints. We move into today, which is Christ the King. And our year ends in a flurry with Jesus on the cross. But then next week, just like that, still in November, like a gust of quiet wind, we step into Advent. We step into a time of waiting and a time of wondering about the Messiah and about the Christ child that's to come into the world, that's to be born in a manger under the heaven of stars. And we take a breath in that time of waiting and we hold it. And we wait for life to begin again. <coughs> And here in the middle of autumn season, Jesus is found on the cross. And we're surprised to find him. We're prepared for this during Lent. We know this is happening in Lent. We prepare our hearts for the journey to the cross. And we, and we sit through Holy Week. But not in the winter, not in the fall, not before Thanksgiving, not before Christmas. It just doesn't fit with what we're prepared for. We're prepared for a baby to come into the world. And we have Jesus on the cross. It's a known yet still surprising ending. And the next part, the resurrection, is not told. Instead, we begin again on a different journey, on a different beginning. The passage of the Bible, this passage of the Bible takes us to the cross with surprising news and the Lord above all lords is exactly the same as the one who is humbled on the cross. The suffering one we see is the same as at same, the same time the man who Pilate says, here is your king. And 
there's a lot of contrast. There's a lot of envy. And there's a lot of beginning. There's a lot of question marks. And it doesn't always make sense. But here we are, again. Now Jesus sits between two criminals, one on his right and one on his left, and he, and he saves one, and he says, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. But before he saves this man, Jesus looks out at his betrayers, and he asks God for forgiveness. He says, forget, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And I kind of think about this other man who was mocking Jesus, and I feel like this statement includes him as well. I don't think anyone is left out. Because certainly he can handle someone mocking him if he can handle someone who just crucified him. So what a solemnly beautiful and tender scene. And it's it's a heart every time. And it's supposed to. It shows that even in the midst of the cross, Jesus is still saving whom he can. So we pause in that. And we take a breath. And we wait. Jesus didn't stop. He kept going. He kept being Jesus even in the midst of trial. Even in the midst of our trials, Jesus keeps going. And we keep going. So next week we start Advent. A time of waiting and a time of waiting for a baby. Not the resurrection. The baby, the Christ child, is a time of tender moments and an excited anticipation. And it reminds us of the cycle of life and when there's an ending, there's also a beginning. So our church ends. Church here ends without a summer break or a winter break. It ends so that it can begin again. And we continue in the cycle of life. We continue in that ebb and that flow and, and the beginnings and the endings with Jesus and in Jesus. It ends so that it can begin again. And we will come out of Advent and Christmas, and then almost immediately we'll get the Easter season. And once again, we will come face to face with Jesus on the cross. And there will be a different beginning in that story. We will come face to face with death, and we'll come face to face with the resurrection. And we'll come face to face with the reality of death and the reality of new life. And because we have hope, and because we have the promise of forgiveness, and because we trust in the promise of eternal life, we can stand at the foot of the cross in the ebbs and the flows, and the ends and the beginnings. And we know that there is victory over death. And that's what today is about. But today, what looks like the end, the Jesus on the cross, does not bring us to the empty tomb, but to a different beginning, one where we're called to be shepherds and tiptoe to a manger where there's a baby with wonder. It's a beginning of joy and love like no other kind into the world. It's a story with a peaceful beginning, but it turns into refugees on the run. And sometimes we forget that part. Because there's cycles and there's circles of life. And we know that life ends and we know that life begins. We know that life ends and we know that life begins again. And there are endings that come in unexpected ways and they seem to take our breath away. And there are beginnings that aren't always welcome. But one leads to the other and the other leads us back again. So Christ the King is not about death, but 
but it's about Christ being victor over death. It stands as a reminder that when we come to the cross, maybe in those unexpected and unwelcome ways, there is a beginning that is waiting for us. It's, but it's waiting for us to be ready to receive it. And in the meantime, we pause. And we take that breath. And we need to be still in the moment until we can find the breath that we lost in an unexpected way. And in that moment, you need to step deeply into your faith and deeply into trust. Because with that faith, we can stand at the cross and we know there is victory and we know that death is not the end. It's never the end. Because where there is death, there is life. Because it all begins again and again and again. This is the cycle of our faith and our life. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. amen.